Hey Weather Warriors, in this video we're going to be talking about a potential cold blast that could be coming into the United States Christmas week and also the threat for a cross-country winter storm around Christmas as well. So we're going to be talking about that. But before we begin, I invite you to subscribe below if you like detailed, educational, long-range forecast breakdowns just like this. More detailed than you would see on the old TV screen. And let's get right into it here, guys. So what we're looking at is the upper level pattern. This is the 500 millibar height anomalies. The jet stream kind of runs in between these troughs and ridges. There's a trough here, there's a ridge here. This is December 22nd we're using uh, the European computer model. You can see there's uh, some, you know, some mild ridging here in the western US, a little bit of a trough into the east, but this will quickly change. Okay, your warmer temperatures are typically under your ridge, your colder temperatures near and just behind your trough. So keep that in mind. As we uh, fast forward here, you can see a storm system is actually moving on to the western United States. There's a trough here. Your storm systems will develop in the, where these lines will stretch out. There's divergence in the upper levels that stretches air up and replaces it with the surface, and you get a little surface low that develops. So storm system moving into Washington, Oregon, uh, Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming. Right now it's moderate, and you can see there's a moderate amount of cool air near and behind that thing. As we head towards uh, around 6 a.m. on the 23rd now, you can see this trough is right in the central United States. That would put the coldest air, you know, the air kind of follows these lines, the wind, so it'd be uh, near and behind these troughs. That's where your cold fronts are gonna be, that winds out of the northwest. You can see it like a vault of cold air coming in near behind that. Very strong ridging behind it. All right, now on the 23rd at 7 p.m., this really blows up and becomes really impressive. You can see it's closed off. I'll go over what that means in a second, storm-wise, but a nice bowling ball trough of cold air. As we head towards the 24th at 6 a.m., it continues to uh, strengthen that cold air and starts to move into the Ohio Valley. The 24th at 7 p.m., it is now from Canada down into all the way down to Florida, there's lower height anomalies. So this is a deep Arctic air mass as it moves into the East Coast around the 24th. Now, we're still far out. Things could change the track and timing and location of this thing. But uh, at the moment, the models are really indicating something pretty uh, significant for a short period of time here. You can see it's in the East Coast on the 25th. It's a very fast moving Arctic outbreak. You can see there's ridging immediately to the west. So this is not a long duration event. This will be like a day or two, but very potentially sharp temperatures, a sharp dip in temperatures. And you can see the 25th at 7 p.m. and it's now exiting the east coast. Now, a couple of other things indicating this is the Arctic Oscillation. You can see the Arctic Oscillation is forecasted to be negative around that time. When you get a negative Arctic Oscillation, it just increases your odds that you're going to get an Arctic outbreak. You have usually a wavier jet stream pattern. Same thing with the NAO. It's usually it's uh, negative during that time period, and that favors a cold Arctic outbreak in the East Coast in particular. All right, let's look at the actual temperature anomalies. This is uh, 850 millibars. This is just off the surface, but... We're looking at the 21st around uh, 7 p.m. Now you can see across the entire country, it's above average. Okay, so we're gonna have very warm temperatures prior to this, five to 10 degrees above average much, across much of the country. As we head towards the 22nd, around 6 a.m., there's that low pressure system. Now out ahead of it, you're gonna get height rises, essentially means you know, you're gonna get warmer air out of the south, out ahead of the low pressure system, and then cold air behind it. But you can see out ahead of it, Temperatures 10 to 20 degrees above average, but look at that cool air starting to come in. Now that trough didn't really strengthen until it got into the Ohio Valley, and because of that, your cold temperatures really won't develop until it gets out to the uh, east as well. As we head towards the 23rd, 6 a.m., you can see uh, the low pressure system over Wisconsin, warm temperatures out in the east coast. So the timing of this will be uh, pretty critical. Will it be warmer than average Christmas Eve or colder than average? It's a very quick moving. You can see the front right here. Here's the cold front. Right behind that cold front here is that Arctic blast starting to develop. Look at that air mass up there, 10, 20 degrees below average coming on down into the United States. Here it comes. This is the 23rd at 7 p.m. That low pressure system now up into the Canada-U.S. border. And you can see the warm air getting pulled up ahead of the system and the cold air getting 
pulled behind it. There's your cold front right in the kink of those isobars. And uh, so very cool there in the plains now, really all of the plains, 10 degrees below average, some areas even more than that. Then as we head towards the 24th at 6 a.m., it really starts getting cold. The Euro forecasting as much as 15 to 20 degrees below average here in, in Minnesota, Wisconsin, the Dakotas, Iowa, maybe even Illinois. As we head towards the 24th at 7 p.m., so this is Christmas Eve now, look at that frontal zone right there. So you have a very tight baroclinic zone where you go from above average temperatures to below average temperatures. And then uh, you can see that core of the cold air mass out there in the Midwest now. Temperatures as much as 20 degrees below average. So it's a very decent plume of cold air. And you can see that ridging out west developing again where there's temperatures above average, temperatures 5 to 10 degrees above average for all of the west from the Rockies westward. In the central U.S., it starts to get become average now around the 25th, so it's a very fast-moving event. We're talking one or two days here. It's now in the East Coast, where temperatures could be 10 to 20 degrees below average on Christmas morning here, and then Christmas evening. Uh, pretty much the same story, just a little bit farther east, but you can see that the, uh, the grip of the cold air does weaken a little bit. So at the moment, looking at the models and the past several runs, the core of the cold air appears to be Somewhere within this line right here, the best shot of that cold air, south central Canada into the upper Midwest is where I think the best bet of this cold air is. But you can see really all of the east on this run has that really, really cold air. Now we're going to look at temperatures here. You know, at temperatures on uh, the 22nd at 7 p.m., pretty, pretty warm across much of the country, 40s, 50s, 60s in the southern U.S., in the northern U.S., you have to go way north or up in the mountains to get those 30s. Uh, the 23rd, or the 22nd at 7 p.m., here's your low pressure system. You can see the, the closed off isobars. And out ahead of that, that's where you're going to get your pool of warm air. And you can see temperatures in the 50s and 60s, almost all the way up to Iowa, even a little bit behind that. And then uh, behind the low pressure system in the northwestern United States, it does get down into the teens and 20s. Here's tw uh, 6 a.m. around uh, the 24th, 4th, so Christmas Eve morning. The low pressure system's now in Canada. There's the cold front. You can see 32 degree temperatures all the way down to Texas, Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi. You got below zero temperatures. That's where that purple is in the Dakotas and Minnesota. So very, very cold temperatures. All the way down into Florida, potentially 32 degrees down into the co East Coast. And then those sub-zero temperatures, zero to maybe negative 20 below in Wisconsin, Minnesota, up into southeast Canada. So very cold temperatures then. This is uh, Christmas Day at 7 p.m. Those zero-degree temperatures, potentially even in the northeastern United States, potentially single digits. Wind chills on Christmas Eve morning. You can see wind chills 20 to 45, 50 degrees below zero up in the northern United States into the southern Canada. And then as we head towards the 25th in the morning, you can see 32 degrees all the way into Florida, down into Texas, Oklahoma, and then that extreme cold air, 50, 60 below zero in southeast portions of Canada. All right, guys, now we're going to take a look at my thoughts on storm potential. This is the 21st at 7 p.m., and the low associated with that cold blast is located over southwest parts of Washington. You can see a nice stream of rain that eventually turns to a decent band of snow from northern Washington into northern Montana. Now, will that be a major storm as it goes across the United States? We're going to fast forward that into the future now. So we're going to go to the 22nd at 6 a.m., you can see the low pressure system now centered over Montana, a really heavy snow band. So this could be a decent little snow event for the northwestern United States. It's still far out. Details will change quite a bit. But you'd expect to see a system with this type of jet stream pattern gliding across the northern United States. By the time we get to the 22nd at 7 p.m., you can see the low pressure systems in the Dakotas, a nice band of snow up in Canada. U.S. border, Dakotas, Minnesota. Notice something missing, though. There is no warm sector precipitation. So this low is still a little bit early in its life cycle where it still has to draw up that moisture from the Gulf 
to support this thing. So the snow is going to be generally light early on. Now, details can change, but this is how it looks right now. As we get towards the 23rd, this moves eastward into the upper Midwest and southwest Canada, Great Lakes region around 6 a.m. But look what happens as we head towards the 23rd at 7 p.m. We finally get that moisture fetch from the Gulf, a decent cold front right here. Now, the main snow is going to be the north towards the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes. Now, it is very cold behind this cold front. We're talking 20s, teens, even single digits. The issue is all of the moisture is out along and ahead of the cold front. The only area where there's snow it's, is far enough north where you have moisture up there and then behind the low. But typically that cold front's going to scorch out the moisture. So the low pressure system near and just to the north, northeast and west of the low, that's where your snow is going to typically develop. So even though you have a big cold front of Arctic air, it's the snow is the low is just too far north. Sometimes you'll get snow to go 50-50 along the front. That's something we'll have to watch. So if you get snow that develops on the backside or just along and on the backside of that rain band, we'll have to watch that. But you see a little bit of indication of that in Illinois and Ohio. But with these type of events, you typically don't get major snowstorms along the cold fronts. It's usually near and north of that low. And you can see the upper level energy. This is the vorticity in the atmosphere. A lot of positive vorticity advection, but it's a very spread out. Uh, typically with a nice blizzard, you want this, it is closed off, but you want it a little more tight and wrapped. And then you'd also want this farther south if you want snow farther south in the country. Uh, but that main piece of energy is to the north. So the main snow event uh, at the, as it stands right now would be the upper Midwest into Canada. Again, things can change. Uh, we're still pretty far out from this thing. Uh, but as you can see, uh, as we head towards the 24th, low pressure systems in southwest Canada, nice stream of moisture in the northeast and all of uh, southeast Canada there into the Great Lakes getting a decent little batch of snow. And then as we head towards uh, the 24th, around 7 p.m., uh, the, the uh, location is off the coast now and the low is way up into Canada. So it's a very fast moving system. Just within a matter of a couple of days, it's already up in Canada. Very cold air behind it, guys. I'll definitely be making more updates if this appears to be a major event across the country storm-wise. And I'll make another update on the Arctic air as well. So stay tuned for that, guys. Hit those bell notifications so you get these videos right off the press, right, right off when they're hot off the press, because that is when these forecasts are best to view. And uh, subscribe if you like these. Share this with a friend. Hope you enjoy this video, and we'll see you soon.